Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and today I'm a part of celebrating Justine Hovey's 50 Cards for 50K, where she's celebrating 50,000 YouTube subscribers, and it's so exciting. So we're having a video hop in which we'll share some of our favorite techniques, and over 50 card examples will be shown throughout the hop. There are prizes, so be sure to stay tuned for more information. Today I'm sharing one of my favorite techniques, and I call it the double stencil technique. I shared this card a while back, and I had a lot of questions on how I achieved it. So today I'm gonna to show you the technique and then I'll share with you a bunch of card examples at the end. I have a whole bunch of stencils here. These are some of the new stencils that I just picked up from scrapbook.com actually. And I'm going to show you how to do this technique using these stencils. It works the best when you have a stencil that has a larger opening area and then a stencil with a smaller element to it. So here I'm just going to tape that stencil onto my cardstock. I'm using Nina Solar White 80 pound paper. I really like how the ink moves on this paper and so that's what I'll be using for all of the cards today. I have a stencil brush and this is just so quick and easy. I'm going to be using Distress Ink in a variety of colors for this technique. This first one is Picked Raspberry and look how beautiful that is. Now I'm gonna leave that on the paper and then I'm gonna add one more stencil over the top and this time I will apply it with a darker ink and this is the abandoned coral. Now I'll tell you, I am using a brand new tool here to me and it's quickly becoming one of my favorites. It's the new domed blending tool. I just ordered some more <laughs> so they're on their way to me as we speak. So I'm just gonna use this uh, blender tool and quickly add some of that. Now, I was a little worried about my color choices here because I didn't want it to look like chicken pox, <laughs> but I think it turned out fun and cute in the end. You've got both of those stencils and the little dots don't go over where the other stencil is, so you still have some nice white space on that background. For the second one, I am going to use the large stripe stencil here and a few different colors of green. So I've got my blender here, uh, my stencil brush, and I'm just gonna quickly brush that on. I am being sure to start off the edge of the paper and then go off the other edge so that I don't get any harsh lines. This makes it so quick and easy to ink up a panel and it goes on nice and smooth. So now I'll use this one that kind of looks like rain or laser beams to me a little. I was trying to decide which way I wanted this to go and I finally decided on this direction. So we'll go ahead with that plan. So now I'll add this uh, the ice spruce with the same stencil brush and just quickly go right over the top. And I did leave that other stencil on for this one as well. So you're only gonna get those laser beams when you have a stencil line there. You see that? That looks really cool. So much fun to do. This double stencil technique is quick. It's fast for building your panels. You may have, if you're like me at all, you may have some colored images that are ready for cards, but you need backgrounds. Well, this is really fun to sit down and do a few of these backgrounds. For this last one that I'm gonna show you today, I used the stripe one with the polka dots, but I did take the stripe stencil off before adding those polka dots. So you can do it either way, and it still gives you just an element of interest to that background. To finish these cards off, I'm going to be using some international words, which is really fun. I need these sometimes in my stash, and so here I'm going to be heat embossing this, and just a real quick card because you have that interesting background. These can be very simple cards. I'll just heat emboss this with my heat tool here. And this is some of my favorite embossing powder. It's called Liquid Platinum from Ranger. It's not quite gold, it's not quite silver. It's somewhere in between and it's just so fun. I've already added the sentiment on the left there, you can see. And here's the sentiment I used at the top of this set here. For the last one, I'm gonna choose Gracias because I always need thank you cards. And I will just stamp that with some black ink on this one so that it just stands out from those, the beautiful background. I did emboss that with some clear embossing powder over the top as well, just so that that would set the ink nicely. The last thing to do is just attach these to our card bases. 
and I'm using some of my favorite liquid adhesive right now. This is the Nouveau Deluxe Liquid Adhesive. And there you have three very simple cards with some really fun backgrounds using two stencils. Here's a look at all the three cards that we made together today with a little bit of embossing and some sparkle and a couple different stencils. They were so easy to make and this one here I did add a few more elements and dressed it up just a little bit. So you can do it as fancy or as simple as you want. Here's a few more examples that I have to show you. This one, the background, I used these two stencils. This one, the wave stencil, and then I left the stencil on and used this second stencil over the top with a darker green color. So you can see you still have some white lines in the middle, leaving some space, so it looks just so neat. And I always get questions on how I do this technique. This one, I used the Stamp Market plaid stencil here, one of my favorites, and then over the top, just in the bottom corner, I used this stencil here. So I put this over the corner and I inked on some darker blue and purple, it's hard to tell in this picture, but a couple different colors and it just adds that extra element. For this one, I also used the plaid stencil, but first I used a circle stencil that I have here. I don't even know if this one's available yet, I've had this in my stash forever, it's from Simon Says Stamp and then I added the plaid right over the top, but I did remove the stencil first. So this one I used one stencil at a time over the others using the same colors. For this last one that I have to show you, I used these two stencils, the mini echoes from the Crafters Workshop and then this mosaic right over the top. It's so fun to use when you have all these colored images and you just need some fun backgrounds, but not too much going on on the front. The backgrounds really add a little extra pizzazz. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. I just wanted to mention that there are prizes along this entire hop. There are five $50 gift certificates that Justine is giving away. So the more videos you comment on, the better are your chances of winning are. The winners will be announced on October 15th on Justine's blog. Well, I hope you will give this technique a try and if you want to learn more techniques you might want to consider signing up for Justine's technique resource binder class. I will link to her class in the video description below. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If you like this video please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I'd love to see you again. Leave me a comment and let me know which card was your favorite and if you are going to try this technique. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.